and it is really nice to see Jimmy. Okay, the last session, you know, the last six frames weren't very good, but uh, Jimmy played great. He won the seniors masters uh, Thank just you. a couple of months ago. Dream and nine. a very good win in Jimmy the qualifiers against Joe Perry to get here, and uh, he thoroughly deserves his place here. And it's nice to see him back on the television. Well, cardinal sin. When you break off, make sure you miss the blue. An early chance for Stephen Hendrick. Just far too thin, a bit too much side on the cue ball there. One. A bit too pacey for the balk colour, but he may take the blue. Because there is a red above the black. If he pots the blue, he can get onto that. He'd have to be very precise, but there is a chance to sneak the blue in. And if he can get the, the white up the table, anywhere near that uh, circle I'm just going to put in, he would be on that red. Possibility that. David Hendry, one. I think he's on the red. He's in line with the circle, so... It was interesting to see his first shot, Dennis, there. In the, in the olden days, when he was a very, very confident player, he would have been playing for the black off the first red. He could have just rolled it in and got on the black, but obviously not confident at the moment. Mind those shots along the cushion, uh, they're quite tight, these pockets. Still has one red to the right-hand side of the pack that will go in the same pocket he's playing the red in now, but if he gets an angle on the black, he'll go into them. So it just depends what angle he leaves himself on this black. Nine. Well, he has the choice. He can do both. He'll probably play for the loose red this time with an angle to bring other reds into play. He's done just that. He has the angle you 60. mentioned, Willie. Mm. He's got to give this a little bit of care and attention. Now that's unlucky. Well, that's very 16, unfortunate. Stephen Hendry, four. He had to play it with quite a bit of pace. But, uh, didn't expect that. In fact, the white tried to climb over the top of the reds, which is not a foul shot. It used to be in the olden days. And you've got to jump an intervening ball now. If you pot the red and then jump over the balls, it's OK. Now, this is a test. This is the sort of shot Stephen Hendry used to practice and used to pot eight, nine out of ten. Why? Now, will he take the risk? He's looking at the pink if it goes. It's a much easier shot to pot and disturb the reds, and it does. I thought he might have punched that a little bit uh, harder. Seven. I think he thought he was going to nudge one of those out and leave them for the left corner. Can he hold this for the black? It's a delicate little screw shot off two cushions. If not, he's going to have to go up the table for one of the ball colours. Yeah, ideally, I'm sure he'd like to get onto the blue, really, because it's uh, stopping the green potting. This is how he was yesterday. He just, it just doesn't look like he's settled in this match at all. Very anxious, played it very, very quick and put a little bit of unwanted right-hand side on. Well, he had to play with a bit of side to get round for the blue, but just missing far too many balls at the moment. I think the brown's going to come to Jimmy's rescue here. Just about, yep. Yeah. It was a good length of the cue ball. I'm just wondering with Stephen, you know, he um, 
his club closed, Spencer's in Sterling closed, well, I think it's well over a year ago, and uh, he now practices at home, whereas he used to go there every day and he'd play with another professional. And just wondering if that's maybe affected his game somewhat. Yeah, I don't think there's no better practice than playing against another player. I know he used to practice a lot with Stephen Maguire and a couple of the other pros used to play with him, obviously at home. Maybe he just practice on his own now. And you can't you can't buy the little bit of tension you get when you, you're having a game with another pro for a fiver or a tenner or something because you know, you just you just get a bit of hmm. bit of nerves, don't you, and things like that. Did you say a fiver or a tenner? I don't think you've ever <laughs> played for that amount in your life, really. <laughs> That's not going to reach, is it? The table's quick, but it's not that quick. Foul and a miss. Jimmy White, four. Jimmy may take the option of not... Well, I'm surprised. I thought he'd... I mean, I can't see the, the, the point of having it played again. He had, a, he had a pot in the long top corner pocket that he could have played as a shot to nothing. Refused it. I'm sure Stephen Hendry will get the path right this time. That shot, you know, that escape shot seems to be quite tough. They're sliding off the cushions, and I've noticed a few of the players are struggling to judge that straightforward escape shot. And this red is going to take on, if he does take it on, is a lot more difficult than the one he'd have been facing the previous shot when he could have got his hand on the table. I can't seem to pot this, though. Anywhere but there. My Jimmy's <coughs> undoubtedly the game's greatest ever player with the rest, so if he decides to play the yellow with the rest, you'd expect him to pot it. I know yesterday, Dennis, he'd, he'd potted, I think, nine out of nine at one time. I don't know exactly what his rest success rate is now. We may get a chance to show you. Well, he's still 100%, and I know he had at least nine shots with the rest, maybe more. Limbo. I'm just so pleased they didn't have a rest <laughs> success rate when I was playing. Six. It would have been at zero all the time. Now, this is a test of his cue action. These sort of shots, they're what you call little confidence boosters. And he cued across it. Just Jimmy slightly Six. across that, but he's got away with it. He's left it safe. But those are the ones you've got to knock in and the modern day professionals, the young pros knock those in with monotonous regularity. As indeed did Jimmy and Stephen in their prime. Clever shot that, purposely played it twice across to make the pink cover the right hand side of the pack. So Jimmy can only see the one red. I don't know whether he can get through to the potting angle of the red. I'm just trying to think if, he, if he'd play to pot it and just roll it in. He, the, the white will just nudge into the pack and he'll be on the black if it goes in and he's got every chance of getting, a, getting it safe if he misses it. But it depends how, how he thinks he'll hit the pack as to whether he plays it or not. Well, I don't know what he tried there, but that looks OK. Not the best safety shot that Stevens ever played. Making contact with the green has left this red on for Jimmy. OK, 
can't afford to miss those, Jimmy. So they're continuing where they left off. So someone's got to take hold of this match by the scruff of the neck. Stephen Hendry's been playing in all the... Well, there's a nice handy fluke. That was a Stephen Hendry of hold, that. Getting the fluke when he missed the ball. But I've been looking at his stats, and he's played in virtually every PTC tournament. He had a decent run in the first one, but he's lost in the last 128 four times on the trot. So he's certainly not in form at the moment. I'm just looking, Dennis, he's lost three times to Matthew Stevens, who's been making a bit of a comeback. Yeah, Matthew uh, going out to the defending Six. champion, Ding Zhongwei, who got off to a fantastic start, made 135 break in the opening frame. Matthew never really got into that match. Do you think Sorry. the fact, Dennis, that Stephen goes out of the top 16, if he, I know the provisional rankings uh, you know, a little bit different this year, but do you think that's playing on his mind? Could well be because he's been in the top 16 for something like 22 years, which is quite unbelievable. And uh, maybe that is at the back of his mind, but I think he's more concerned with his technique looks the same. It's just uh, psychologically he's, uh, he, he's struggling a little bit. One thing I've noticed, I think Stephen's a little bit too proud to refuse the long shots he used to knock in all the time. Now, obviously, everybody in the game who get, gets a little bit long in the tooth, as it were, can't pop the long ones as he used to do. I, th I still think he's very, very good in the balls. I still think he's you know, definitely got a chance of winning a tournament, but his long game has gone. And I just think he, he finds it very, very difficult to bite the bullet and refuse the long shot. 14. Uh, beautifully played there. That's given himself a good chance now to take this opening frame. 20. I'm not saying the 90s, uh, the frame would definitely be over, but <laughs> nowadays you're just not that sure uh, with what they've been missing. Yeah, the good thing is he can win the frame with the three reds that are in open play. He doesn't have to worry about those two reds on the left-hand side cushion. He can score enough points by taking those three with high-valued colours. 28. Needs pinks and blacks, though, otherwise he'll need one, one of those reds. He's just checking the scoreboard now, Dennis, isn't he, whether he should move one. I think that's what he was thinking about, but... Just waiting, biding his time. Forty-four. I've just looked at the scoreboard again and I miscalculated. He actually does need one of those reds, so I'm 45. really surprised at that. The shot previous to that, when he had an angle on the pink, he could have gone into them. I'm surprised he didn't bring one of those out. It doesn't want to finish absolutely dead straight on this because he's going to need an angle on Four. one of the ball colours to get up to the two difficult reds. If he is dead straight, he can screw back off the cushion and leave yellow, green or brown. Oh, he's got a slight angle there by the looks of it. 41. Difficult now. Not the right angle on the green. Not the right angle on the yellow. The blue would be the one that would get him over to the reds. And he could stun over behind the red. The green there, white to the left, he could have screwed back. But the blue is definitely on. And if he can just stun in behind the red, he's got a chance here. He doesn't have to move them. Just 
stun over there, anywhere near there would give him a chance. But he's going to play it with the rest. 46. Yes, I'm sure he did play to get onto your line there, Dennis, to give himself a chance of both reds. I mean, where he's finished now, I mean, it's... Uh, I, I don't blame him for playing safe. It's the one down the cushion is tough. He's got a very, very sizable lead now, some 32 points. And with at least one red on the cushion, his strong favourite to take this frame. Stephen Hendry, 46, I think. Good break, though. No easy safety shot, so Jimmy will have a go at this. He's lining himself up for it. He'll take that, will Jimmy? When you have a go at a shot like that, you Always a good chance you can stick the red up the one you've missed. He mustn't be able to see enough of the red up by the green, otherwise he'd play that one. Yeah. Browns preventing him from doing that. Yeah, he'd be probably playing the, the cut tap double here or, or just the very, very fine one in behind the black. He looks like he's taking the fine shot. The only thing is, if he doesn't cover the red, he's given Jimmy a very easy chance to move the red out. And that's why I'm surprised he played that. Oh, oh he's got the angle, has he? Has he got the angle <laughs> there? I, I, you know, when it nestled there, I thought this is going to be a snooker for that red past the black and the angle is snooker. Just watch the white as it comes to rest here. In fact, it just curled back in again. Well, Stephen will definitely be taking this on, but it's got to be very careful. He doesn't cannon into the red. He doesn't want to bring the red into play. There's 32 points in front, so red and colour's enough. first glance I can't see how he can miss the red because if he plays with a lot more side he's going to hit the black well that's how he missed it <laughs> is it thin oh Jeremy White four Jimmy needs that red into play near the side cushion and that's the one he is going to play safe off and then it will be anyone's frame the way the balls will be sitting. <laughs> be a bit careful here, he could leave this red over the right corner or potable to that corner. Well, he has left that red I mentioned, but what a lot of pressure there is on this one. And he will take it on. Jimmy's always played the game that way. Probably a little more conservative now than he used to be. But if he sees a chance to win a frame, he'll have a go. another pressure well being left-handed the black's not too bad but that was a, a very good pot played for the blue but the wrong side of it now then <laughs> chance to pinch this opening frame it. well Stephen mr. Brown in the last frame of the session to take a 5-3 lead He's going to see this one, I think, disappear away from his grasp, and 
He now knows he should be leading 6-3 and could be 5-4 behind. This will begin to hurt. Just got to be a bit careful with the brown here. If he pots the blue and comes off the box cushion, he's got to make sure he gets <coughs> the pace right or he could snooker himself. That's what he's thinking about at the moment. It's a bit too risky then to play the kiss into the brown, isn't it, to make sure you don't do snook yourself, but... Yeah, if you can on the brown, it could go anywhere. If you hit it full ball, he'd be perfectly on the yellow, but... Just got to play a delicate little stun shot here. Just make sure he doesn't snooker himself. He's played onto the brown. Now. Well, that's that's pretty good because even if he had missed the brown, now, he was still going to be okay. So. Fourteen. Sixteen. Well, it was a fantastic opening red. Stephen Hendry played what looked like a very good safety shot, another two inches of pace. He wouldn't have been able to see the long red. He knocked it in. And he's taken these very nicely. This is really going to hurt now because those two frames I mentioned a little feet. earlier both should have been Hendry's. Oh, he's under hit that. He's given himself a problem now. That's always the tricky one. Brown to blue seems to be the tricky part when you're clearing the colours up. And if he cuts the blue in the middle, he may have to uh, go up and down the table because I don't think he can hold it. It's too thin. And if he takes it in the corner, it's a much more difficult pot. If he rolls it in the top, I don't think the in-off's on. he get nicely on the pink, but let's make your mind up time for Jimmy. The cut seems to be favourite, but he's going to have to play it with quite a bit of pace if he goes for the middle. He's gone for the corner, and he's played it well. <laughs> He thought long and hard, and he took the tougher pot. Top three, four. And he's left himself a similar black to the one at the end of the first session. And Stephen, well, got to just sit and see what happens. It's not straightforward, this. Jimmy White got just half a chance, and that was all he needed. He deserves that drink. He's gone in the lead, 5-4. Stephen's situation is it's more of a shock when it happens. And even though Stephen's had a, a few years uh, of feeling like this, he still really feels he's probably a better player than Jimmy White, and he's the one that should win this match. So more expectation on Stephen Hendry. The interesting thing is if we can actually get two frames ahead here, Jimmy, whether he'll relax a bit more as well, because it's been nipping tough all the way. It has. The whirlwind is in front. It's very similar to the previous six frames in this match where both players have needed two or three chances to win it. <laughs> Stephen Hendry will be kicking himself the way he's lost the last two frames. He really will. And I totally agree with John and Steve. The, when you get previous of missing shot after shot after shot, all of a sudden every shot looks difficult. and Everybody comes to that state in the game where they, they question their own ability, they question whether they're still <laughs> capable of playing at the top level, but... Stephen Hendry has been one of the great players, if not the best player. That's a good safety shot. Now does that red pass up into the left corner pocket? No, that's very tight. Might go, but um, it's the sort of shot that Stephen 
used to practice a lot. I mentioned it before, but his success rate at the long pots has uh, diminished somewhat. That's why he's having second thoughts. But if he could knock this in, I'll have his confidence. Whether he played the pot or not, we'll never know, because <laughs> he missed it by so much. But I'm sure he played the pot with a bit of safety in mind. But that seemed a little quick for Stephen. The cue action was definitely a bit quick for him. Another chance for Stephen to knock a long red in and finish on the blue. Now, if he plays for the blue, there's quite a bit of pressure in this because he's leaving a red into the left corner. So let's see if he fully commits to this. He always usually does. It's not there at the moment. In fact, look where he's put the cue ball. He screwed back for a ball color. Vintage Stephen Henry would have knocked the red in, finished on the blue, and won the frame. Different days. forced into taking a pot on here because that nudge in the yellow has prevented him from getting safe down the left side of the table. Yellow now blocking that. And there's no real colour available, but he is going to take the pot on. Now, where's this cue ball going to finish up? More importantly, where's the red going to finish? See, the other element to this for Stephen, it'll be a little bit embarrassing to be missing that type of shot by so far. Well, it's hard to you know, write people off, but it's, it's very sad to see Stephen playing so poorly. I don't know whether it's been practicing hard enough or what but uh, literally seems to be really struggling at the moment White <laughs> Jimmy White sort of trick shot where you play with a top spin hit it hard and the white doesn't go anywhere and he knew he'd finish on the pink but it's not the easiest of pinks but now he's refusing the pink and that tells you Another story. So he's doing a bit of grinding here, is wait, Jimmy. Wait. And I think the way Jimmy's thinking, he, he knows he's got Stephen under the cosh here, and he thought, well, if I take the pink on and miss the easy pink, or miss the, the pink, I could leave him an easy opening. And he's trying to prevent Stephen from getting in amongst the balls. And he's all over the place at the moment, Stephen. He really is all over the place. I 
think what he needs, he needs to get in amongst the balls and, and, and knock in a 50 or 60 break just to get him back on track. Yeah, he did that first round, didn't he, when he made 46? And there was a time in that in that first break where I'd, I'd actually misread the scoreboard thinking he didn't need the two reds on the cushion and he was perfect on a pink to bring the two reds into play or at least one of them into play and he refused to do that. And In, in the end, it cost him the game because it, those two reds ended up on the cushion and if you take yourself back, you know, five, ten years, Stephen Hendry wouldn't have ever refused to, to bring balls into play. Why? And in fairness, he's been quite lucky the last two shots he's come to the left Jimmy because both times Jimmy's not really had an easy shot to get position. So he's got away with the last two misses, yeah. Stephen Hendry. Yellow ball. You can't keep getting away with it. Jimmy White, one. pretty good at first glance there's no easy escape for Jimmy and there's no red he can have a go at and he can't come off the side cushion to land on the one near the right corner pocket because he'll leave a couple of reds to the left corner so at first glance he's got quite a problem here I can't see uh, an easy escape for him at the moment As I say, usually when you can't get back up the table, you look for a spot up the other end of the table, but there's, there isn't one available this time. So this has got to be very thin to avoid canning into the pink and reds. Watch the side. Well, he hit the wrong red. He was playing the red to the right of the pink, and he would so much side on, he missed the red completely. So what a chance for Stephen Hendry. Okay, finished straight on the red, but he couldn't get his hand comfortable. He didn't know whether to bridge on the cushion or bridge on the table. And I bet Jimmy can't believe uh, what's happening out there. He's having the white cleaned. I don't know if he got a kick on that shot. But Jimmy's <laughs> mistake now has worked to his advantage. Quite amazingly. Eight. Nine. I'll just show you, Jimmy was playing a safety shot off the red there. <laughs> he so much side missed it completely and uh, hit the wrong red but he's back at the table with a fabulous chance Fourteen. Fifteen. Twenty-one. 
22. It looked a straightforward shot, but it wasn't that easy. He couldn't run through for the black because of the angle and awkward bridging. He did well to get a little bit of screw on that. Jimmy White, 28. Now that's a lapse in concentration, that is. <laughs> now these fast cloths, the ball normally doesn't turn. I think he just put it straight onto that near jaw. But what a mistake. One. Seven. I think all three reds to the left of the pink part, so he doesn't have to do anything with a cue ball here, just roll it through and he'll have certainly one of those reds available. <coughs> that 34 point lead that Jimmy's got means that Stephen Hendry virtually needs all these reds. And the way he's been playing, not likely to get them. 12. Twenty. Twenty one. He's overscrewed that by quite a ways. He played for the pink to leave an angle to get on the two reds to the left of the pink. Now he's having to take the yellow. Played with a lot of side to straighten the cue ball up. 23. Twenty four. <coughs> yes, Jimmy White might just have missed a trick here because he had a great chance to open up a two frame oh. advantage. Forty one. Both these reds are available. Yeah, you'd like him to be as close as possible to these. You wouldn't want him to be at length. I mean, rolling the ball in, I fancy him to pot them, so he's left himself in a position where he can Pop roll it. <coughs> he's done that quite a few times, hasn't he? He's got down on the shot, then got up again. He wobbled that one, but uh, he's got the good angle on the black. To get in behind the red near his hand. Now, you'd 
expect him to screw back up for the blue because it's much easier to get on that last red from the blue. It's an easier positional shot to play for the pink, but then we've got a lot further to travel. So let's see which of the colours he plays for here. Forty-six. Now he's played that perfectly. Yeah, the fact that the brown's off its spot doesn't half help it, doesn't it? There's plenty of room now to get onto this red, and well, he'll be horrified if he doesn't win the frame from here. He made a 46 in the it first, and it wasn't enough. He really needs to make this count now. This is the tough positional shot of what I say tough. It just needs to get onto a colour properly, and he doesn't look like he has. He's just not doing it at all at the minute, but it's finished OK. Well, that's amazing where he's finished there. It couldn't have finished better, and there's no pressure on this blue because you can just roll it in. It, it, that was honestly three feet away from where he played. Quick look at the scoreboard, and that tells him he just needs two more pots. 59. And all of a sudden, he's looking good. OK, that one positional shot there that he overhit, the rest of it's been immaculate, really. It's amazing. 62. So that will uh, make Stephen Hendry feel a lot better, and uh, he'll be able to put what's gone ahead out of his mind now. Um, 66. Jimmy will... Uh, well, he's certainly missed the trick there. 71. Such an easy red he missed. Well, I don't know how he's won the frame, but he has. He missed three very, very easy balls. And look at that, he missed that by an absolute furlong trying to play a positional shot. Didn't realise he was playing to the corner. Break in, Stephen Hendry. The break comes to an end at 77, and Stephen Hendry would be a very relieved man. Jimmy White should have won it, but Hendry has, and he's levelled again at 5-5. Five five. In a best of 17 frame match or the longer matches, if a player can just open up a two frame advantage, it can make such a difference. And Jimmy had the chance to do that. They've, there's never been more than one frame in it. They've, they're locked together, these two legends of the game of snooker. Good shot. One. Wanted to screw back a little bit further. This depends on the cannon here on the red when he pots the black. Or can he avoid? He can avoid the cannon. Well played. Sixteen. I was just going to tell you, Jimmy normally 16. cues very low on the shot and then hits it a little bit higher than he's aiming, but that time he seemed to jerk at it a bit and miscued, but he's been very fortunate. 
I'm just having... We're going to get a chance to see the shot again, Dennis. Um, you mentioned earlier on in commentary that, as we see Jim McEwen very low, didn't you mention earlier on in commentary, if you go over an intervening ball, is it not supposed to be a foul? And when we see this shot again, I think he went over the, the ball on. So I think, it, I think Hendry should have got four points from that. Yeah, I didn't notice that. Uh, no, no, no. It, 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 it must be good. <laughs> no. I think Stephen was just... Yeah, well, concentrating on was he querying that and maybe it's because he miscued? Yeah. Let's have a look. Mm. Well, Stephen did query it, but I think that, that these referees, they know the, the rules inside out, but it's, uh, it's a good point, Willie. Yeah, I think it was a foul, wasn't it? Thank you. I think Leo Scully and the referee were saying the fact that he miscued, but you know, he still jumped over the ball. Former policeman from Glasgow, I'm not going to argue with him. <laughs> I love all the policemen up in Scotland. I have to drive up there quite a few times. It's clear to see, that even though we've had a, some nice breaks, 46, 77 and 41, that we're still no nearer to knowing who's queuing the best at the moment and who's likely to take the chances more. I mean, at the moment, Stephen Hendry's missing more than Jimmy White, so you'd have to slightly fancy Jimmy, but it's a long way to go. Jimmy playing the safety shot again, not entertaining that red to the left of the blue. And uh, that red I mentioned. Will Stephen Hendry take it on? No, he's looking at the uh, well, the more difficult part it would have to be said. And, and he can get round the back of the reds and black. But nowhere near the pocket. For somebody who's been so brilliant and I don't say that word lightly brilliant. I mean, he's been the, one of the, the great, if not the greatest player of all time. It must be a real shock to the system to see the shots he's missing at the moment. I remember coming to the end of my career and I, I used to think, well, how on earth do you miss that? You know, missing blacks off the spot. One. I think it's just something, the older you get, you get previous of missing shots and, you, and your mind just can't cope with it sometimes. I mean, he really does look like he's, he's ready to throw the towel in. Big help to get the black back on its spot here. Pink tied up. Overscrewed that Fourteen. slightly. He was hoping to be able to take this red and play for the blue. He's now going to have to play a delicate little shot to get on the black. He's got to find the gap here when he pots this with the cue ball. And he hasn't hit it hard enough, has he? Is he just about okay? Must be tight. Jimmy's had a good look. And the referee's having a good look, and we can see from this side that it's very, very tight. He had a little bit more margin for error there, but uh, he's going to have to turn this slightly with a bit of side, you would feel. Doesn't like it. So, mistake there from Jimmy. Yellow ball. Jimmy White, 15.
Well, he's back with another chance now, Jimmy. One. Just the wrong side of the blue. It's just the positional side of things that Jimmy's struggling a little bit with at the moment. Got a long way to travel now to get back to the Reds. The green's the problem ball here if he's playing in and out of Bork. If he plays around the back of the green, it's a tough shot. Oh, he missed it by a fraction, didn't he? Doesn't he generate fabulous cue power? Well, that's an excellent shot. Six. The cue ball just actually sped up with the top spin, and it was all about missing a kiss on the green. And look how close he came to kissing the green. Beautiful shot. Seven. Yeah. He's having the cue ball cleaned, which tells me maybe a slightly heavy contact. Not on the red, as he would have liked. It's a bit cold outside. It's very cold outside, but I tell you what, it's pretty hot in this arena, the way these two boys are playing and struggling to get top form. But it's very exciting stuff. Yeah, so I've just had a text from William in Scotland who's watching this match. He's uh, not been able to get down because of the weather. He was just, he just texted me saying, well, I hope Stephen Hendry doesn't lose because he'll be straight in his car trying to get home. And the way the weather is at the moment, it's absolutely horrendous in Scotland. It's apparently snowing terribly up there, so we need to stay the night in Telford. Uh, if you get beat, you usually get straight in your car, don't you? Whatever the time of day it is, you want to get home. Eighteen. Oh, that was a kick. Jimmy White, that was a horrendous contact. Yeah. Um, well, it's part of the game these days. We never used to get kicks quite like this when the balls were slightly heavier, the cloths were slightly heavier. But it makes you look so silly when that happens, and it's not your fault. But what a reprieve for Stephen Hendry. One. Oh. If he's not on the black, that's that's a terrible shot. It really is. And he's getting straight down, not even thinking of potting the blue, rolling to the green. He's, Stephen Hendry, he's going through it at the moment, is Stephen. Even though he dished up in the previous frame, he's still not settled. Almost unforgivable, isn't it? A little bit unlucky there, Jimmy. He played a, a decent safety there, but caught the yellow. Once again, no real pressure on the shot. He can't leave a red on apart from the one he's going for, so he should be playing for the blue, but the way Hendry's confidence at the minute, he may not. Oh dear. Very sad. One. He really is a wizard with the rest, Jimmy White. I mean, the pot was easy, but look at the cannon.
Yeah, he still potted them all with the rest, but that was an easy pot, but it was the cue ball there that was very special. So it's 14 Nine. out of 14 with the rest. and Nice little cannon on to either of the two reds near the pink here. Oh, we hit it full ball. It's going to need to pull a long pot out. A quick 16. glance around at the scoreboard. And he needs this red and a colour to make absolutely sure. And that's not in. Jimmy White, 16. <laughs> now, mind you, what's the difference? What's on the table? 59. And he's 64 in front, so he's OK. I say he's OK. <laughs> he might be snookered here. this long pot to make absolutely sure. In fact, it looked as if he played the safety shot. I don't think that red would go the other one I thought he might have taken on. But at the moment, Stephen needs two four-point snookers, so he could do with a few reds and blacks. Well, let's see if we can get close to this one. No, not even in the jaws of the pocket. You can see him muttering to himself, it must be such a shock to the system not to be queuing anything like. I don't think I've ever seen him queue worse than this. Two in one shot, that the odd shot to nothing, played very nicely indeed. <coughs> He's knocked the red straight over the pocket, so... That will be Stephen's last shot in this frame. He's playing a trick shot here, plant, and he's going to pot four reds here. <laughs> what are you trying, Jimmy? Why didn't he just get down and knock the red in that was over the pocket? I think Stephen's had enough of this frame by the looks of it. No, he's coming back. But what was Jimmy doing there? He played the plant. Why didn't he just knock the red in that was over the pocket? Doesn't really matter now about that last attempted at plant where Jimmy was trying a sort of a trick shot. It. <coughs> Nine. So Jimmy's going to take that slender one frame advantage again, but it could quite easily have been a three frame margin. 
and he not have missed a sitter in the middle pocket in the previous frame, but it was a good clear up from Stephen Hendry. I don't know, you just seem to sense, Willie, that this might go to a deciding frame and uh, <laughs> both players will be missing all sorts in a, a tense decider. Yeah, they both seem frightened to get over the line Thank at the you. moment, don't they? one with the rest <laughs> surely he'll not knock this in Jimmy White, he's missed you. one with the rest Andrew can Frank. you believe it phone the police Stephen Henry has got a lot to think about sitting in his chair there Jimmy White back into the lead 6-5 to the whirlwind that's the problem when you start missing him Willie alluded to it in commentary you know he, he doesn't refuse any long pots you can actually get yourself in trouble by taking them on. At this point in the time, he needs to play solid, hard snooker and get over the line any way he can. Yep, this is a very serious situation for a seven-time world champion and indeed for a former United Kingdom champion, Jimmy White. Yes, I totally agree with the boys in commentary. And I think the key thing, really, is that Jimmy's actually already gone through it three or four years ago. He's gone through what Stephen Hendry's just starting to go through now. And Jimmy's got used to the shock to the system, missing balls and, and, and developed... Uh, a cue action that's that's good again and, and he's able to play with it. But Stephen Hendry at the minute just doesn't look like he can play at all. And even that safety shot, much too pace. Pacey to... And Jimmy refusing the long pot again, so he's got a game plan. He really has. Normally Jimmy would have taken that red on the left of the blue, but... Uh, I think he's left a chance for Stephen to cut the one in this nearest the pocket. I think he can get through to that. Well, can he? It's a bit of a guide if he misses the other red, but he might overcut this. Cue ball's closest. Black is available if Stephen can just judge this correctly. He'll go in the left corner pocket, but where can he put the cue ball? One. He's played it well. Listen, we've seen in the past, we've seen at the World Championship when he's backs against the wall sometimes. I remember him against Mark Allen a few years ago. Young Mark Allen played fantastically well and Stephen, with his back against the wall, knocked in two or three century breaks in the last four frames. So never write this man off, even though he's technique and he may be struggling a bit. All of a sudden it can kick in. Yes, we've already seen this afternoon, haven't we? Breaks of 46 and 77. Eight. Thank you. But it's just when he's got close control, that's that's when he can get them. But that wasn't the best positional shot he played off the black. This is a tough one. Nine. Well, that's as good a shot as he's played today. That was excellently played. I think with someone like Stephen, who dominated the game throughout the 90s, uh, there's something that does kick in when you're really struggling and under pressure. An inner strength, you would call it. Fourteen. Got the mid-session interval coming up after this frame. Never won 
or more than one frame separated them in this match. The worrying thing for Jimmy White supporters if Henry gets out of this session 2-2. Two, two, Jimmy probably or definitely should have won all four. So this is going to hurt Jimmy if Henry nicks this one. Just the wrong side of the blue, so he'll have to leave a longish pot, something that he's trying to prevent at the moment. He wants to get closer to the reds. And maybe that's why he's going to try and force this all the way around. Now he's just dropping it in. So I think the black's still available, you know. Right. Yep, there you see it. Yeah, Stephen Hendry playing slow. I think he's got a little bit of chance of finding the centre of the white when he plays this kind of shot. 21. I'm surprised he didn't risk playing for the black there, but uh, he decided to play up for blue or bought colour. He played for the blue, obviously, but over round. I think any time he plays at pace, that's when his cue action is, is struggling. When he's just rolling them in, I think he's OK. Once again, he's got up from the shot, so indecisive. Back to the blue again, but I thought he should have played it with a little drag shot to leave himself on the black previously there, but that's how he sees it out there. Pretty good recovery there. But the black is only available 26. into one corner pocket. I'm not sure what sort of angle he's got on this red. If it's straight, he's got a problem. It is straight. He's just looking to see if there's a possibility he could pop the black into the opposite corner. I don't think he can force it to get himself on the pink. Twenty-seven. He just can't get himself into ideal position here. As long as he keeps potting them. Yeah, when you do get a little bit tight and, uh, you know, you actually kind of move on the shot. And Stephen Hendry's previous red, just have a look at his body Potting movement too. here. He just actually th th almost threw the cue at it. Potted it in completely the wrong side of the pocket. That's the reason he didn't get top side of the blue, and now he's left himself another tricky one. Top to three. <laughs> he concentrated so much on the pot that time, he's overran it because he's missed quite a few of that particular type of shot. Needs a good one here. It's not straightforward, this. He'll automatically finish on a red if the brown goes in. He's having to grind it out here. And that's what he'll have to do in this match. He'll have to take a leaf out of Cliff Thorburn's book, the old grinder. Yeah, again, the run-through, Dennis, he doesn't look like missing it, does he, when he plays just to run-through? Anything top spin, he looks fine. Anything power... Looks very vulnerable. Not to eat. And talking about the grinder, Cliff Thorburn, he normally can tune in to watch this back in Canada. He's back playing pretty well again, is Cliff Thorburn. In fact, we are doing 28 shows next year in the Legend Series, and Cliff's coming over. And believe what it or not, Kirk Stevens coming over to play three shows. It'd be great to see Kirk Stevens again. Yeah, I've got a good team. John Parrott in the studio there, myself, Jimmy White, Cliff Thorburn, a few other guests, Ken Doherty. Well, this looks like it'll go on to the yellow spot here, which... 51. 
It's amazing, really. He's made 46, 77, and 51 and counting, and uh, doesn't look like he can pot a ball. <laughs> so it just shows you how, how great a player he is and what a great strength of mind he's got. Fifty-two. Well, that's a beautiful shot that time. <laughs> Terrific shot. Reverse side. Watch it take when it hits the cushion to get the right side of the blue, and this will give him the frame if it works out. This next shot. It hasn't though. It's a tricky red to the middle. He's so good at that type of shot, but he needed to hit the pink full ball rather than half ball. Now, if he knocks this in, <laughs> I mean, these are so difficult off the cushion. Stephen Hendry, 57. Well, he almost clinched it in one visit, but he's a strong favourite, you'd have to say, to level again. Refuse the cut in the other corner, knowing that he's bound to get a good white playing that way. The ball's in a, not in a bad position for a possible Jimmy clearance. They're all at this end of the table at the moment, so if he does get a chance, it, the balls are not too bad. Stevens reluctant to play one of these reds on the cushion to play safe off because the blacks at the other end of the table and those reds will be very difficult, the ones that are on the cushion. So he's just playing a containing safety shot here, very, very thin. Well, he wanted it thinner than that. Ideally, Jimmy would like to get the black onto the spot very quickly because of those two reds either side of the black spot on the cushion. They're not going to be easy to play on pinks from. Play to get onto the black there, and as you can see, he's just over around the cue ball. If you can still see the black, you'll probably play it, but I'm not too sure that he can see the black from here. <coughs> well, he can, so that's what he'll be doing because all the reds are at this end. Twice across, he can just about almost drop on the cushion twice across. the two reds on the pink spot are available so he's going to have to play with one of these on the cushion so just miss the blue twice across and should be on both of them Ground ball. not even on the black so he can't see the black I thought the way he was looking he could get down and pot the black <coughs> five Nothing there. Jimmy White, five. Jimmy's playing to keep the Reds in potable positions and Stephen Hendry's trying to knock them safe to protect his 52-point advantage. It's not a straightforward safety shot here. 
And sometimes we know with Stephen, if there's no uh, safety shot on, he'll have a go at the pot. How close will he get to this? That's a bonus, knocking the pink safe. He took the pot on in such a way, he was leaving the white near the side cushion. So there's no value in Jimmy taking this pot on. You want him near the pink spot because there's no colour available. Got to be a wee bit careful if he tries to bring both these reds into play. He's got to get a good cue ball. And he has brought them both into potable positions. Stephen can take the one near the pink spot as a shot to nothing. <coughs> try and cut it in and get the white up towards the yellow. It's one of those situations Well, he's just going to play the snooker. He was thinking about maybe putting the black safe. Stephen Hendry, uh, one. With the pink out of commission, the black out of commission, that would have made it very difficult for Jimmy, but as it is, it's pretty tough. Twice across to land on the red. This nearest the left corner. He's misjudged that. He's stuck them up here. I think that is just about it. Why? So we can't separate these two great stars. Six all. Started out the best of 17. It's going to be the best of five. Six. Seven. Well, I think that's the first red at distance that Stephen Hendry has potted. We have to screw the ball back, and uh, uh, I think they'll both be going on the practice table. That's for sure in the interval. Jimmy just uh, well, acknowledging defeat there, rather than Stephen Hendry getting the rest out. It was a session that could have gone either way. Perhaps in fairness, Jimmy should have won it three-one. He hasn't, and we're all square at six all. Just a quick apology there. Some areas may have lost the picture briefly, but you're back with us and you haven't really missed anything. the main part of that shot he got the pot he was hoping to find the gap he didn't think he was going to cannon into the reds there but it was good queuing to knock the red in he thought he was going to go between the two reds with the cue ball and no problem getting position here with a red near the corner pocket you got to knock the color in Jimmy White one <coughs> It's amazing, isn't it, how the blue in the middle has always been a lot of players' Achilles heel. I mean, it, you wouldn't think it'd be possible, would you, just a strain and a half ball blue? So many of those have been missed over the years. Now, don't tell me about yours again. No, I'm not going <laughs> to mention it. Against Steve. Listen, that was a lot easier than that. That was a, a difficult one compared to the one I missed. Why? Just talk us through that one again. Uh, <laughs> we're not, I'm only joking. <laughs> It was in the UK Championship, wasn't it? Yeah, you, you would have probably won it that year. You'd have knocked the blue in. But now, the fact that Stephen Hendry is going to be playing this black with not a lot of pace, I don't know whether he's going to attempt it in the middle or in the in the in the corner. We'll know in a few seconds when he gets down to play the shot. But 
This is uh, a big shot because he knows he's bound to leave something on should he miss it. Looks like he's decided to play it in the corner. Now, with him putting, if he was running this, in, I'd fancy him knocking it in. The fact that he's going to put a bit of stun on it may tweak it to the right hand cushion. No, it didn't even catch the jaws. Stephen Hendry, one. Yeah, left hand cushion, he finished up putting it on. Well, I'm not sure if he give a little thumbs up there as if to say, well played, Stephen. Just giving himself another telling off. Pink tied up, blue awkward, the black awkward. It can be easy to score from here. Got the extended spider because he's got to reach over the pink and the red. Well, has it stuck in the... I think it's stuck in the, uh, the little grooves, did it? He was only just rolling the red in and playing a safety shot, but it was as if the cue got stuck as he pushed it through. Let's have a look. See the little V that you push the... Well, strange. Oh, what? he's had a good result here. He played to open them up, I suppose. He deserves a bit of good running. But that couldn't have turned out much better. Always taking a risk, but... Uh, a little beauty, that. Yeah, you'd be hoping the, the pink spot is covered here because that would keep the pink at the black spot end and if the pink goes back onto its own spot, we're in the same situation where the three big colours are all tied up. Seven. Well, if he cuts the red, I mean, there's an easy red to the middle pocket. He was thinking of cutting the one into the corner and playing a cannon onto the blue on the way back up. But uh, he's decided against that. Well, I'm a little surprised, Dennis. He has decided against it, but at least he can run through and get on the black here with this one. He knows how important it is, Stephen Hendry, as you would expect, to get all big colours on the on their spots. This is going to have to be played at pace, so... As we know, he's not finding the centre of the white very often at the moment, so this is not guaranteed. Fifteen. Need a couple more shots before he can get up to the black spot area. Sixteen. Black only available into one corner. So he'll probably play for the red that's nearest the pocket. Needs to pull up. It's so okay. Well, we know how quickly Stephen Henry likes to get the Reds into play, so I believe an angle 27. on this black to get into the bunch. Twenty-eight. Needs to arc round those two reds at the, just above the black. He needs to arc round them and come into the side of the pack. Let's see how well he plays this. He wants to miss the first two. Well, he hit the first two, and that's the reason he's on nothing. Well, he's got one in the middle, luckily enough. But he tried to arc that cue ball there. You see, you, you see the cue ball there. He tries to arc it round the front red. Just got into it too much. This is a tester. And all of a sudden, Stephen Hendry queuing very well. That was a terrific shot. Not only to pot it, but to 
get himself onto a colour. Just come up a little bit short. He's oh. going to have to push through the reds to get on the black. And that oh, was the problem, went. the previous shot. He didn't come back far enough. He wanted to be straight on the red, and now it's end of break. A little thin safety around the angles here to get on the cushion behind the green there. Stephen Hendry, 41. I think Jimmy thought he'd knock that in. I thought it was going in. One. Eight. Just needs a red and one more colour and he'll be back into the lead for the first time since he led 4-3. Coming just at the right time for Stephen Hendry fans. Nine. A couple of snookers required from Jimmy at the moment, so it'll be interesting to see if he comes back to the table. Stephen Hendry, 16. Yeah, he is. Well, <laughs> he isn't. <laughs> Decided to concede. So Stephen Hendry, as I mentioned, back into the lead for the first time since he led 4-3 at 7-6 to Stephen Hendry. Yeah, and does that exacerbate the problems you're experiencing? It certainly does, and obviously you know, once you're left amongst the balls, uh, when the other guy's not playing too well, you feel as if you've got to make it count, because that's, what, that's your job to do that. Yes, um, quickly, but both players probably have uh, to get out of the uh, mental attitude of worrying about how they're playing, thinking about how the other person's playing, thinking about the winning line, and just to, to immerse themselves in playing the game that they know they can play. And I think we saw signs there of Stephen Hendry starting to focus in a bit more he started to look a bit more authoritative around the table, just sort of touching the cloth, picking up a fraction as if he was more, more in tune with the table. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first person, I think, to sort of do that could become the winner. OK, well, he is inching towards the line now. He can see it, he can feel it. He needs two more for victory. 
Yes, he's been doing all the scoring today. Hasn't he? He's 46, 77, 57, 41. Jimmy White's only had a break of 41 in taking a 5 4 lead. And now he's 200 odd points in front, or virtually 200 points in front. Well, Stevens just played a dreadful shot there. He was talking to himself at the end of the table after he played it. One. No way Jimmy should have had this chance. Especially when you get yourself a frame in front and you're just taking slight control of the match and then you play a careless shot like the one he's just played. I mean, this was just a, was more of a full ball. He hit it half ball. I think he's calling himself a few names there. Don't blame him. I think he was actually saying that's the worst shot I've ever seen because I, th I think I could lip read the first few. <laughs> Or words to that effect. <laughs> Thank you. It. Well, he's looking at the cutting handle of this red into the corner, and he may even cut it into the red and black now. This is a little bit dangerous. Uh, he hadn't decided whether he should go into the red and black or around the back of it. Tried to go around the back, but it's Jimmy's turn now to struggle a little bit. One. Wanted a bit of screw on that, didn't quite get it. More of a stun shot, the white just stayed there. So where's he going to push the red? And more importantly, where's he going to put the black? That was the problem. It's just going to get seven points. It. Not a three ball plant. He had a quick look at it into the middle pocket there, but it's not on, as you can see. But always worth a look. Stephen Hendry, eight. If he's got away with this, now what's this red going to do? Looked as if he was going to get away with it, but a mile from the pot again. Well, he's playing for blue in the middle pocket, Dennis, there, wasn't he? <laughs> to sweep round two cushions. Penny for your thoughts. We wouldn't want to hear them, I don't think. Jimmy's now starting to struggle. He was a bit close to that red. They're always difficult to pick the angle out, but he didn't get close to the pot either. And I think he was a bit annoyed at where the red finished up. You know, he flicked one over the middle poc pocket. Excuse me.
point. Seven. And to hit that again. The only good thing about it is uh, he'll be bringing a couple more reds into play. Got to be careful he doesn't go up the other end of the table and glance off them. Tried a delicate little shot there. A little bit unlucky there, Jimmy. I know he's come back for this red on the top cushion, but he wouldn't want to play this this early. But it's just, he's finished okay where he can play it at a pace, as you see the shot again. He didn't have to play this hard. Nine. Well, Jimmy White won't get a better chance than this. And he has been playing very, very well. In the qualifiers, had to win three matches to get to the venue. But he's actually jabbed at that, didn't hit that. 16. Didn't go through with the cue here, just watch him, you see, just jerked at it. He's feeling the nerves. Yeah, it's just a little bit of anxiety when you move like that on the shot. It's such a big Seven. match for Jimmy, he's fought so hard and, you know, he's been playing through the qualifying rounds. Winning that World Seniors was a big boost for him, beating Steve Davis in the final. He's got a lot of match practice in the PTC events and the EPTC events, played in Europe. And this would mean so much to Jimmy. But this game, well, as you know, Willie, when you're, when you're trying too hard, 22. it's very difficult. Yes, it'll be a shot to the system. Uh, obviously, Stephen Hendry's struggling, but I mean, Jimmy's been playing great. And, uh, I think he knows that he's got Stephen Hendry queuing really poorly, and he should be winning the match. And I think he's a little bit uh, worried the way the match has gone so far. He's had plenty of chances. But he's in a position now where he hopefully will oh. level at 7-7. Seven, seven. Fifty-one. Fifty-seven. Fifty-eight. Well, he got a terrible kick there, yeah. and. There was no way he was going to cannon into the black. Let's have a look at this again. It's just a straightforward run through. Look at the ball's jump. And it's pushed the white onto the black and knocked it into an awkward spot. He wants to punch the table. And this now is such a tricky black. 
made even more difficult with having the unfortunate heavy contact. Big shot now for Jimmy, this. Didn't try 45. and force it. He's left himself a trickier red than he would have done, but he didn't want to risk forcing that black. Good recovery. Nothing going in clean at the moment, but that puts Jimmy 53 in front with only 51 on. So this is Jimmy's highest break since the very first frame where he made a fabulous 115 break. Well, Jimmy missed a trick a couple of frames ago. He could quite easily have been two or three frames in front. And now it's Stephen Hendry's turn to do the same thing. And 61. And neither player can get hold of this match by the scruff of the neck. Stephen did have the chance there. A few bad misses. Jimmy's going to be all square again. Jimmy White. That 61. won't worry Jimmy White too much. He made a very, very good break there. Break of 61, the highest since the first frame to keep himself in the match, but we're still all square. That's seven all. How big a frame is this, by the way, to go 8-7 in front? Oh, absolutely. OK. Stand by, everybody. Yes, we're all standing by, Hazel. Now the best of three. Just a containing safety from Stephen Hendry. The old Cliff Thorburn dump shot where you leave the white here and dump the red up the table. And nice to hear Cliff doing uh, the voiceovers, talking about the players. He's got a lovely accent, has Cliff Thorburn. Oh, that's careless. Jimmy's turned away in disgust. He should have been putting Stephen on the uh, the cushion rather than hitting the yellow there. Still not queuing well. Yeah, I think we're going to see a little bit more grinding in these next few frames. They're just going to have to knuckle down and use all their experience. That red seemed to jump a little bit there when we showed you that. Slow mo. Is it time for a double? One. Well, there's never a bad time for a double. If you can get on the red near the black, you'll be in great shape. Well, he's gone too far. He had Five. a few reds to play on. He tried to get on that one there and uh, just didn't cue through it. What's he spotted? Might be looking at the possibility of a plant, but it is a safety shot he's taking on. That would be very difficult, but you never know. And there you go.
Now, does he take the long green on? Or does he go in behind it? There's the answer. Jimmy White, six. It's amazing, isn't it, Jimmy? Obviously one of the old school of players where he realises how difficult those shots are in the middle. All the modern day players now just get down and roll them in the middle. That's how confident they are in middle pocket shots. Very good shot from Stephen Hendry that. Didn't quite get the white in ball. Did the main thing, hit it and got it reasonably safe. That's pretty good where the pink is finished. He might be able to get past the pink to hit the side of the reds and return up towards the brown and yellow. That certainly opened things up. Has he got enough pace on the cue ball? Feast of snooker here this afternoon for you. Standing by to continue their enthralling match is Ronnie O'Sullivan and Stuart Bingham. They're locked together at four frames all. They will come on this table when this match finishes. Well, can't be bad, all this cold weather and you snuggled up in the house watching these great players. Well, not easy to get back into Bork here. He's, uh, he's going to have to play a really fine shot. He's playing the one just above the black and trying to swing it around three cushions, but it's very, very difficult. Oh. Did he look at that? I didn't notice him have a look at the point. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Stevens. And Jimmy was just trying the safety shot there and. Uh, Yes, it was a three ball. I thought it was just a two ball plan, but he certainly didn't notice that. But if he takes the pink or blue on, both are fraught with danger. Blue ball. He's trying to go in between yellow and brown with a cue ball, so the positional side shouldn't be a problem. And the pot wasn't. What an excellent pot that was. Gives the gap perfectly between brown and yellow. Six. But it definitely wiped its feet. Just keep an eye on this blue here. Any harder, that wouldn't have gone in. Seven. Black's totally out of the game at the moment. But the pink's in the clear. It's available into... Well, all pockets. There's nothing blocking a pocket. So we can concentrate on uh, pinks here, and the reds are nicely situated. series of little stuns and okay. screws and you don't have to hit the cushion for quite a few shots the way they're sitting here. It's a good way to have a little practice session if you're in your club. Just set the balls around the pink and black and play 20. these little stun and screw shots. 21. Um, but you need to play them a little bit better than that. That's just a little bit of tension, a little bit of adrenaline, overscrewing it. Oh. 
Well, he is one of the best in the business with the rest. He's just composing himself now to take a very difficult pink on. Yeah. But he wants to have a go at it. He's only missed one shot with the rest, and it didn't really matter. The frame was over. Twenty-eight. Got a bit of a bounce in his step, Jimmy. Now. I mean, he didn't have it early on in the match. And that break of 61 has obviously livened him up a little bit, and he knows that uh, he should be winning, and maybe he's just got that little bit of confidence back that 34. can make this into a break of frame winning proportion, and that will take him one up with a possible two to play. Well, what a time to do it. Forty-two. A little bit of a stretch there for Jimmy. Stephen knows that he's going to have to produce his best now to get through to the next round in this year's 1-2-bet.com World UK Championship, not World UK Championship. That's okay. This is a good performance from the 48-year-old Jimmy White. This is quite remarkable to see him back on the television tables playing like this. Oh, that's okay. Not as he intended, but he'll take that. And you know, Willie, the oldest player to win the UK Championship defeated Stephen Hendry in the final, Doug Mountjoy. 55. And Doug still playing. I think he won the European Seniors Pool Championship. And we're hoping to get Doug along to one of the Legends evenings. 51. Well, he's certainly changed gear, hasn't he, Jimmy White? Didn't have a break above 30 for the four previous frames and then went 61-61. 62. 
And, uh, he's looking exceptionally good again now. Sixty-eight. He'll not bother about that. That's another great effort from Jimmy White. What a time to produce two sixty-plus breaks. He's now just one frame away from what have to be said is a famous victory. He leads eight-seven. As he's just sort of. Being, being hardened up by the mm. PTCs, the EPTCs, and trying to learn his trade. OK, well, he's one away, as indeed is Jimmy White. And as we all know, they are the hardest frames to win, especially for a player that's not really been on television much in the last five or six years. And he's just shown a fabulous bit of form in the last two frames, those two breaks of 61 and 68. Should stand him in good stead if he gets an early chance. See how good Hendry's bottle is because he's been really struggling today. That was a bit of a nervy one from Jimmy. It could have finished a lot worse for him. The black's tied up. There's a red into the left corner, but Stephen can't get on a colour from it. So he's had a bit of a result there, Jimmy, after that miss hit. Just playing a safety shot uh, to get round the back of that red. Cannon full ball into it. Why? Well, that's about the best he could do with that. He's left himself a chance at the pink. That was all he could do. And let's see what Stephen Hendry can produce here. Pink will go in the left corner when it's re-spotted, so he can roll this red Seven. in. And if he can't stay the correct side of the blue, well, the pink obviously won't go on the left. There's a red blocking it. So he's had Eight. to leave himself the wrong side of the blue. This is a tester because he's going to have to go through the bought colours. It's amazing isn't it? when his back's against the wall, all of a sudden he's hitting the ball good because the last two or three shots he's played have been very, very good indeed. 13. Until he gets rid of the red that he's touching now, that's going to really open the frame up. So he wants to go red, blue, and then try and get rid of that red that he's virtually touching now. 14. Oh, what was he doing there? He must have thought he was going to miss the kiss on that red. I think he got a heavy contact, Willie, and it took the white into the red. Yeah, maybe he thought he was going to kiss it on the right-hand side, and it bounced, as you saw, on that camera position there. This is a tough blue. I think the kiss on the green's very close as well. Yeah, I can't understand the why he would even pop that, knowing he was going to kiss the green four ball. 19. So, free for Jimmy White. Stephen <laughs> Hendry, 19. Seemed to play that with a lot of side to try and avoid the cannon and uh, misjudged it again. So, well, we thought this might happen. It's a big, big frame for Jimmy White, and 
He's played it with lots of right hand side and uh, he just caught it all wrong. Why? When you haven't been used to winning, the last frame is the toughest one to win. The great champions are used to winning in style and the player that has been struggling feels the pressure. It's just a natural progression. Still got to do something about the man. I'm looking at this, you know. If he pots a red and a blue, there's a red he can get onto the right corner, and he can get himself onto the black. Seven. If he gets this next shot correct, he's having a look at it. A little stun shot would leave a red into the right corner, and he would finish on the black. That's okay, he's still on the red. And if it's dead straight, he just knocks oh. it in and he's on the black. But has he gone far enough? Not quite. He played for the one to the left there. So back for the blue and then again, he'll try and get on that red. 14. Now let's see if he can judge it better because it will bring the black into play if he drops on that red. He's got it this time, Dan. And if he goes high on this on the next shot, he can bring the red away from the black spot, and the black, amazingly enough, will be available in both pockets. 19. Gone a little higher than he wanted, I'm sure, there, but he's still on. Thought he would have played that with a slight stun rather than just rolling it. Twenty-six. Just a little stun shot would have been better. He's got top spin on the white, taking it away from the reds. So that was a mistake. Oh, I don't think we can ever question Stephen Hendry's shot selection, but goodness me, he's got to know that Hendry. he was going to lose the white playing a run through. I mean, the stun shot was <laughs> was elementary for some of Stephen's shots. Just stun it in, the white stays somewhere on about the black spot area. Amazing. Completely misjudged it. But he has a sizeable lead, 45 points. At this stage of the match, that could be enough. Well, this needs perfect queuing. He's got to push that queue through in a straight line here. Can he do it? He can. Why? Well, I said at the start of this session, the way the two opening frames were going, I said we could be in for a deciding frame, and it's looking more and more like that. Well, what excitement we're in for here. It's almost certain. What's the difference? 53 yeah. points. He's not safe just yet, but you would think it's going to go right down to the wire here. Well, we came into this final session with the scores at 4-4, and Stephen Hendry right. had not potted one long ball, and he knocked that last long red in like it was over the pocket. It just shows you when the, when the back can't be any further against the wall, these great champions find a bit of form. The ready knocked in was just never looked like missing. This is the key shot though, it needs to get onto a red. Hasn't done so, so there's 14. still a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, but not much. Henry, 14. Yeah, the fact that Jim is 51 behind, he'll be bringing the black into play here to both pockets. So try, listen, try and get in behind the yellow somewhere if he can. It's 
59 nil in front, I should say. Maybe it's uh, too difficult to get back in the ball. He's got a probably a better chance to get a good safety shot here. It's not bad. too thin now can Jimmy get himself onto the black off this red along the cushion maybe not maybe it's too straight very difficult and the black might not be available reds either side of it there preventing the player from getting onto that this, this will open things up. Bit unlucky for the red to come back and block the black. Jimmy needs them in open play. Well, the way he's queuing Stephen is going to be very careful. He doesn't can into the pink here if he hits this too thin. Oh, he's play All of a sudden, he's found his cue action. What a shot this is. All of a sudden, he seems to be cueing better. Time being, Jimmy's just lost his cue action a little bit. Hmm, this is not uh, guaranteed. Played it well, though. <laughs> that red's come and blocked his path through for the green. So it's a far trickier blue that he's faced with. He's looking at the scoreboard, so what is he, 60 in front? Stephen Hendry, one. No real advantage to play the red that's around the pink spot because he can't guarantee to get onto the blue, so he may decide to just play the red in bulk. He can almost leave the white where the red is and send the red round, but he's going to have another look at this red. He's 60 behind, so he can't really afford to take too many low colours, so just the safety shot coming up. That's pretty good. Only one of the high-valued colours available, the blue. And Jimmy, 60 behind, needs high-valued colours. So you would expect him to play up for the blue. He could leave green or brown, but blue would be better. Let's see how he plays it. Why? Yeah. Not very well. He's 59 points behind. There's still a possible 59 on the table. Okay, he's going to get a snooker, but 
As Jimmy long White. as Stephen Hendry makes contact with the red at the moment, Jimmy can only tie with four reds, four blacks and all the colours. Starting to catch his safety shots uh, correctly as well, Stephen Hendry. Jimmy somehow needs that black into play. Just lost his way in this frame, Jimmy. It was always going to be a tough frame for him. He needed a an early easy chance in amongst the balls, but he didn't get it one. Trying to get the white in behind the pink here because it was snooker on every other ball. But Jimmy left himself open for that, really. Now, is there enough room to go behind the black? No, he's. He can just get past the blue. Stephen Hendry won't mind all the reds up the opposite end of the table to the black. Bit of a chance for Jimmy to get on the black. Off either red. One to the right's an easier pot. And he'll get a great round of applause if he finishes nicely on the black from this. And that is played to perfection. White. Brilliant shot from Jimmy White. <laughs> no problem with cue par as far as Jimmy's concerned. In fact, when you an exhibition with Steve Davis he does a little bit of a chat about Jimmy and he said that Jimmy's got a bionic left arm <laughs> he said he can screw the ball back into the car park anything but straight straight is no it's good needs the blacks remember you can, for, you can force up that for that angle if he plays to stun it in when it hits the cushion, it almost generates into topspin, so he could get up for the black off that red. Doesn't like it, though. Maybe it is a little bit straight, but I think he could bounce it up there. I really do. Yeah, that's what he's played. He did it quite easily. Nice. Well played. <laughs> if anything, got too much into it, didn't he? Well, 
if he takes all blacks with these reds <laughs> where they were placed, it'll be quite remarkable. He can only tie, so Stephen won't be panicking just yet. I think the browns in the way slightly. Uh, the other one, he might be able to avoid the green and get back up for the black. Well, maybe he can screw past the brown. Well played. 17. And as long as he <laughs> slides up past the brown, I think the red passes the green. So if he can just slip up past the left side of the brown, he'd be perfect. Has he gone hard enough? This looks absolutely spot on. Thank you for just run six inches too far to me. I mean, it is cuttable. Now, I just hope he doesn't play it with a lot of side and all of a sudden come right close to the pink and blue here because that, that, that's the only thing that can go wrong. Just a little bit of side and get there nicely. I think he was worried about Can't that pink and blue as well. Four. I can Stephen Hendry see enough of this red because if he can't, it's not easy to pot it off the cushion. But what a chance that would have been for Jimmy had he have potted that. We've had everything in this match. Century breaks, lots of misses. We nearly had a re-spot there. Now that was difficult to pot as he fluked it. Well, this is an impossible situation for Jimmy. Now, we talk about Q power. How do you get onto the black from there? He will have to force this so much to have any chance. The only other way is to hit the cushion first. Don't know if he can do that even. If he hit the cushion first and flick the red in, the white would automatically come up, but he's going to power it in. Oh, he's hit the yellow. That's helped. That has helped. smile from Stephen Hendry. Wow, this is entertaining stuff. And the fact that he's left-handed, if he could somehow get on the cushion just above the yellow. The yellow won't cause too many problems, but how does he get there? It. Surely we couldn't have a respotted black here. Not at this stage. Well, they would love to see a respotted black, I'm sure. <laughs> Stephen Hendry wouldn't. It's the first frame that Stephen Hendry hasn't played a bad shot in, and he's still eight. not eight. over the line. He's obviously still a strong favourite to win it, but uh, Hendry's played this frame absolutely perfectly. His safety's been good, his queuing's been good. The fact that he's 27 in front, he may decide to take this on. Yeah, he's got to take it on. He might cannon into the brown or blue or pink, but this to guarantee a deciding frame. I mean, the balls are in pretty good positions for a snooker, and a snooker would help Jimmy. And we keep saying he can only tie at the moment. Well, they're loving every minute of this, aren't they? It's time for a little prayer. Good shot. This is a terrific shot. Didn't play the pot, played the snooker. Hasn't quite got it. You'd have to say he's very unlucky, Dennis, isn't he, not to get it. He's a big target in behind blue and pink there and just came out. Mm, he's not the green save, so 
just uh, roll the yellow in, Dennis, wouldn't you, and play the snooker? Absolutely. Pot the yellow and then try and get up behind that blue and pink. And he can do that quite easily. Just bounce it off the cushion to yeah. around the, um, the green spot would do with the cue ball. And then he could play that snooker. I mean, if he's got an angle to play this with a lot of side and get in behind it being left-handed, he might do. But with only been able to tie, just roll it in and get that snooker. He's played it with lots of side, but this is tough. No matter how good you are with the rest, down the cushion. Do you think he'll take it on? I think he should have played your shot, the snooker. I wouldn't like to play this. This is only 50-50 if he takes this on, Dennis, isn't it, surely? I wonder if they'd take it on. And this is a bit of a stretch if he reaches round there. It's not easy to play the snooker now. Is he going for it? He did. And he may have thrown frame the frame away Sweet. there. I think his wrong choice of shot was drop the yell in and play the snooker. And then he could have won this frame that would have taken him into the second round. Three. Well, that certainly puts the frame beyond any doubt. And Stephen Hendry's played his best frame of the match right at the right time. 12. Well, I suppose, in fairness, the balls have been missed from both players. I think it deserves to be eight all. Henry, 12. Jimmy White acknowledges Henry. defeat, so both players, I'm sure, are going to leave the auditorium here to gather their thoughts. Room for a cracking decider. It's eight all. There are favourite, is there not? Who's it going to be? No idea. <laughs> Absolutely none. And Thank all you're you. looking for now is a chance. That's all you want Settle in a final down. frame Thank decider. You. you don't want you're someone making a hundred and running away with it. You right just want me. your own chance. You can live with yourself. Well, Monday afternoon drama. Good luck, Jimmy. Good luck, Stephen. Players got a great reception when they come back to start this deciding frame. Not the best break off from Jimmy, an early chance. One. Typical Stephen Hendry. He's missed so many of those. He's in a deciding frame, and he cued that beautifully. As he did at the start of the previous frame, and he's given himself an early chance. And as John Parrott said in the studio, all you can ask for in a deciding frame is to get one chance, and what a chance Stephen Hendry has here. Just coming up to five hours. We've had everything in this match, century breaks, lots of misses, lots of tension. It's amazing, isn't it, Dennis, that until he was 8-7 behind, Stephen Hendry has Eleven. looked so ordinary and just totally out of sorts. But that last frame, he, he played absolutely fabulous, the last frame. And now he's given him a chance to win this well. frame as well. And he'll go straight into the bunch here because he's guaranteed to be on the red at the back of them. So if this works out, he'll give himself a terrific opportunity. He's on. Oh, he's fine. He got enough spin on it. Thank you. Watch the white stop and then 
grip and spin again. Yeah, he's amazing, this fellow. He really is. How he can produce it when his back's right against the wall. And that's where he's calling on his vast experience. That was a great Ready argument. Who's the greatest player who's ever picked a cue up? Yeah. I still think it's Stephen Hendry. A lot of people will go for Ronnie O'Sullivan, but... Steve Davis held Indeed. that mantle for many years. Still, some people might think Steve's the greatest player that's ever played, but Stephen Hendry, with the titles he's won, would still hold that title for me. Will he get a chance? Will he, will he? <laughs> well, if this was three or four years ago, I'd say no, but I still certainly kind of a half expect Hendry to miss, but the way he's played this last frame and a half, it's been like the hold, Stephen Hendry. Not ticky. Both players will be extremely disappointed with the way they've played. And the loser will think, how on earth have I lost? Four. And the winner will do battle with the Welshman, Mark Williams, who's back to his best. But just the break-off shot, Jimmy didn't get it as he intended and left half a chance and that's all that Stephen Hendry's needed. Did you see that little glance to the pocket with his eyes? The only player that's ever done that. He looks from the ball to the pocket. Not all the time. Well, it's quite remarkable, isn't it? It's an inner strength, it has to be. And let's come out here. Well, I, I wouldn't believe I'm watching the same player. We've seen a man queue all over the place for the whole match. Missing Brown off the spot, missing Blacks off the spot. All of a sudden, when he cannot afford to miss again, he produces. Couldn't get nicely on a red, although I think there's one behind the pink that goes into the middle pocket. Now, the number of times in the 90s this man has finished a match with a century break. Well, you just have to take your hat off to Stephen Hendry, don't you? Incredible. Jimmy will be kicking himself, but the last two frames 65. have been... Just fantastic. I mean, Jimmy's six. played his part. He made a break of 61 and a break of 68 to go 8-7 in front, and he hasn't done that much wrong. It was just that bad break-off shot, and he's had to sit in his seat ever since. Jimmy now needs snookers and uh, a little shake of the head. Well, that just tells you the whole story. Stephen Hendry, 73. And that's a magnificent effort from the Scot. That 73 break means that Jimmy needs a snooker.
In fact, he needs a couple of snookers, and look where this red's going. Well, that is the end, and Jimmy White comes <laughs> forward <laughs> to shake the hand of the seven times former world champion. It was a great match in the end. Both players started to produce. Jimmy White looked as if he was going to win when he laid 8-7, but in the end, Stephen Hendry, it was a little bit of vintage Stephen Hendry in that last frame, and he goes through to the second round to meet Mark Williams, 9-8. Great match, well done to both players. Well, call it inner strength, Dennis, call it instinct, but whatever it is that makes him such a great champion, it kicked in. Jimmy White... Well, he's left thinking about what might have been. He's given his all in this match, and hasn't it been absolutely wonderful to see Jimmy back here, the crowd just acknowledging his efforts over the past couple of days. Well done, Jimmy. Hope to see much more of you in the coming months.